to share a little bit about the background story of these two ladies. They were adopted from the BLM by a group that has been rampantly adopting from the BLM under various different family member and friends names. And then um, while the addresses on the titles all state different um, locations for these horses, they're actually all housed at one location because when they're dropped off at the Stroud, Oklahoma Kilpin, they are told that they are all bred to the same Appaloosa stud, meaning that they are all actually housed on one property, which is completely against the BLM rules and they should not be allowed to adopt any more horses. Um, these people have adopted and dumped 15 horses at the Stroud Pen, all covered by the same stud, in the last six months alone. It's a real problem and they are a prime example of how the BLM's Adoption Incentive Program, which pays out $1,000 after one year to every adopter for up to four horses per year. Um, so these people are all collectively adopting their four per year, getting that incentive payment, actually not keeping these horses at the addresses that they um, apply with to the BLM to adopt. And then they are dumping the horses and the horses are directly at risk of being shipped to slaughter. It is a terrible situation that should never be allowed. And these people should certainly have some compliance checks done by the BLM. Um, I'm going to have some more information about this um, soon. I'm waiting on a couple more of the titles to be sent to me so I can do some more research into the names of the people involved and um, go ahead and call the local BLM office that is closest to these people in Oklahoma and get this reported and hopefully we can stop them from adopting any more horses as their intent is clearly just to use these horses and abuse these horses as a cash cow, not to actually keep them and provide a good forever home for these previously wild horses that deserve so much better than to be adopted, bred, starved, and then dumped. Here are our beautiful ladies. This one is known as Piper now, and this is Harmony. Our sponsors chose a musical theme, which we just really love. It's so beautiful. So their babies, when they come, will also have those themed names. And I wanna get a look here at their body condition for you guys. Let's see if I can, hi baby. Wow, that sunset is gorgeous. Um, Harmony, she looks pretty good actually. She could use a, a little bit more weight along her top line here. Her hip's a little pointy, but um, certainly in much better shape than beautiful Miss Piper over there, who always likes to stay behind Harmony. These two are so bonded, y'all. It's so beautiful. Thank you so much for making it possible for us to save them. I'm just gonna see if I can get you a view of her here. We see many ribs. She is very, very, very thin. Poor girl. Her hip is very pointed. Her top line very sunk in. And she really, really, really needs to put on weight, especially to be very likely carrying a baby. To do that healthily, we need to put lots of extra weight on her. Now, I have seen lots of discussion lately about how to properly refeed skinny horses. There's been some discussion around this in the rescue world due to some recent events going on. So I wanted to talk about that a little bit. As you can see, they have a whole bale of hay here with a slow feeder net and those holes are smaller than one inch i believe they're three quarters of an inch so the horses are able to munch on that hay all day long like they would be if they were in a natural um, setting and able to graze all day and they will only get small amounts they can't take giant mouthfuls 
If this bale was out here with these skinny horses with no net, they would almost certainly eat way too much, way too fast. And that would result in some actual um, possible really bad sicknesses that we really don't want to um, bring on these girls that really just need all of the extra weight that they can get. We have to refeed them very, very slowly. So it's very important and that's why we use these slow feeder nets. And we also will not give them grain until they've been here for about a week and their body's used to the amount of hay that they're eating. Um, so very important. And when we do start giving them grain in about a week, they will get about a handful and we'll gradually work that amount up to the full amount so that we're not overloading their systems. It's very, very, very important, especially with horses that come in as skinny or even skinnier sometimes than Miss Piper here. So um, these ladies had a hole in their net. You see that string by their face there? I've gotta go cut that off right after I make this video. I just patched up a hole because like I said, we use the slow feeder nets so that they have to eat slow. So it defeats the entire purpose if these nets get holes in them, which they often do because the horses paw at them and eventually wear holes through them. Even though this one's new, they have already put a hole in it. <laughs> so um, we always just patch those up. I'll go cut that string off here in just a sec and it is as good as new. And we can ensure that they aren't eating too fast so they're not gonna get sick from being malnourished to now having all of the abundant hay and in a week or so feed that they could possibly want. I just wanna thank you guys so much for making it possible for us to save these ladies. I just cannot stress enough that you guys are the reason that we're able to do this work. Thank you so much for making it possible for these two ladies to come here and to now be safe. They will never again see the slaughter pipeline. They will never set foot on a trailer to Mexico. They will never have to worry about hungry bellies ever again. And both of their babies will enjoy the same benefits of freedom and love and care that every wild horse deserves. While we wish they could all stay wild, um, unfortunately, it's just not something that is happening yet so we'll keep working for that but in the meantime we've got to do what we can for these horses that find themselves in the worst situations and have been just completely taken advantage of by humans who sometimes really can suck but you guys give me hope and humanity and faith and really just you guys doing this work shows everyone that humans can be amazing and kind too and have a big, big heart for these deserving animals. So thank you so much. These two ladies are still looking for a couple sponsors. If you're interested, I have put the description or the link, sorry, in the description. Um, you can sign up for that if you'd like. Sponsorships are like long distance adopters. So um, you are essentially a very, very integral part of these girls' lives as they get to live out their days here in freedom and peace. You get special updates and special sponsor-only benefits and access to our entire page of behind-the-scenes special sponsor-only content on Instagram. So um, if those things interest you, you can find that link in the description. And again, this work would not be possible without you guys. Thank you so much. For myself and from Miss Piper and Miss Harmony back there. Thanks for watching.